Alright everybody, my name is Iron Armenian and I thought I'll put together a tutorial for people that think they're starting to get a hang on how to play War Thunder and wish to know a bit more. I'll be showing you guys how to set up the controls and the necessary bindings to take advantage of these features. We'll start with the tanks first and we'll cover multi-tank turret control, driver's view and binoculars. For planes we'll cover opening and closing the cockpit lid and switching on and turning off interior lights. These things will not necessarily make you a better MLG player getting all them sick kills in 360 no scopes, but these are just mechanics that you aren't taught about but they are far of fun to use. Without further ado, let's get started. First I'll show you how to enable the monocular view and the driver view. So what you're going to want to do is press escape, go down to controls, change over to full real controls, go up to view controls, and then scroll down. You will then see driver camera and binoculars. You can then just click on this and you can then press assign button. I've bound these to 8 and 9. I find they're fairly useful so driver camera are bounded to 8 and binoculars are bounded to 9. That's useful for me. Ah, now here's a mistake I almost made. You must remember to change back from full wheel controls back to mouse aim before you quit. Otherwise you'll end up with a configuration you don't like. So now we can quit, and we'll show you now. By pressing 8, you can now get the viewpoint of the driver. To be honest, this is fairly useless. It's just fun for driving around in for and getting to the combat zone. It has absolutely no use that I can think of strategically. By pressing 9, you can enable binocular view. Binoculars are actually kind of handy, especially in realistic battles. Binoculars have better magnification than the current default gun sights. As you can see here, I'll just demonstrate it. By looking down the normal gun sight, that little Panzer II is quite tiny, but by pressing 9 to enable binoculars, he's now a little more closer. Binoculars also has the benefit being that your gun turret can be pointed somewhere else, e.g. forward in this case, where I can scan the horizon around me by using the binoculars. If you're looking through your binoculars, you can press mouse 1, and your main tank bow will turn in the direction you're looking at for your binoculars. But you can't fire in this mode, you'll have to cycle through back to your gun mode and fire through the main gun. You can't fire through binoculars. Personally, I think you'll definitely find number 9 useful, which was the binoculars, but driver view, it is no benefit to it at all, I reckon. Now for the more interesting one, multi-turret tank control. Okay, I'll show you how to set this up first. Press escape, go to controls, switch back to full real controls, go to tank control, and scroll down. Then you should see Select primary weapon, select secondary weapon, and select machine gun. And also, reset weapon selection. I bound these to the number pad, so that's a little bit off to the side of your main keyboard. If you're using a laptop or something, you can still bind this to whichever keys you think are handy. I bound it the best way I saw fit, which was select primary weapon to number pad 1, select secondary weapon to number pad 2, select machine gun to number pad 3, and reset weapon selection number pad 4. Remember to switch back to mouse aim, and then you can press OK. And now those changes are saved. I'll show you an example of what you can now do with a tank, now that you can control individual tank barrels. So by pressing 1, we're now taking control of the middle barrel. By pressing 2, we can now view the other turret. And by pressing 3, we now can take control of the machine gun on top. Although, to be honest, I've never really found any use for controlling the machine gun individually. I did get once, once, I did get a kill with the SMG tank. That's a Russian heavy tank that has a little machine gun on the back of it. I manually took control of the machine gun and used it to kill a little AA truck. Anyway, by pressing 4, you take back control of all three turrets, and then you can put them back together again. At the moment, you guys are probably thinking, why would I want to point three turrets in three different directions? What's the point of this? What the idea is that you don't really need to point them in other directions, you can take advantage of the ability of looking down the individual sights for each gun. The way they're working right now is all I control all three. They're not going to all aim at exactly the same spot. So if I wanted to take control of the biggest cannon on this thing, which is number two, I can take control of the big gun and aim it more precisely. Because the same with all tanks, the default viewpoint is of the main gun, which in this case is actually not the most powerful one. Same goes for the machine gun, if I wanted to aim the machine gun precisely at stuff, they don't exactly fire at the same point. But if I can take manual control by pressing number 3, I can then focus fire at a particular target. 
Let's talk about planes now, and I'm going to show you something which will not help you in the slightest for getting more kills. What I've done is I've switched to first person by just tapping V. And in first person, I can now control the canopy opening and closing, which offers zero strategic advantage at all except it looks pretty cool. I can also switch on and turn off the internal cockpit lights, which does nothing. Now if you want to do this, here's what you want to do. Press escape, press controls, switch to full real controls. Then if you scroll down, you'll see open cockpit and cockpit lighting. I have bound these to 8 and 9, which are the same ones that I used for my tank. But you will not be controlling a tank at the same time you're flying a plane, so there's no problem with these having the same buttons. After you've set that, make sure you switch back to mouse aim, and press escape and escape. And you're good to go. You have now shown you two useless things which will not help you in any way possible, but they are fun. Now you may be wondering now, why am I showing you a blank screen and nothing going on? It's because I lied internal cockpit lights can actually be useful. As you can see this is what happens when I look forward, I can see absolutely nothing. But don't worry, we have internal cockpit lighting to help us. By pressing 9, we can now see the inside of the plane again. Although, stormy and night maps actually never happen in Warfinder, I've had like 5 happen to me. Yeah, I've been on 5, maybe maybe 5 or 6 night maps in my 1100 hours playtime of this game. So yeah, go figure. One little bit of trivia before we wrap up this video is that the canopy opens and closes much more quicker when you're not moving at all, as I shall demonstrate now. It closes fairly quickly. Let's do this from the air. Let's try opening and closing the canopy at maybe 350 kilometers an hour. Let's give that a go. Alright, let's press 8. As you can see, it is opening very, very, very slowly. Let's try and close it. Very slowly coming back forward. I think it's a nice detail that Gaijen did. I mean, they didn't need to put that detail in the game, but I think it is pretty cool that the speed is linked to how fast you're going at the current time. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment. If you didn't enjoy it, don't leave a comment because I don't really care about your opinion anyway. Alright then, take care all, and I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe, or I'll break your f***ing legs.